the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on the second Sunday of Easter, also the Sunday of Divine Mercy. I'm Father Peter J. Choi. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from a family who are parishioners of St. Clement's Parish in Etobicoke, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Delphine de Souza and for other deceased family members and for world peace. We know that this televising Mass brings meanings, meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land and around the world and they join with me in thanking our donor for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let Israel say, 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As priests, one of our pastoral duties is visiting the sick in the hospital. And there was a the story told of this young priest from Poland who was visiting a, a, visiting a hospital. After having visited his parishioners, he, went, he was about to go home. In the hallway, however, he met this one nun who was asking him if he can visit just one more patient before he went home, saying that he was on his deathbed. She told him, he drives everybody away, but he's dying. He needs your help. So he went in. After a few moments of small chats, the young priest asked him if he wanted to go to confession. The man then got angry and asked this young priest to leave. So he ex exited the hospital unit and he was about to go home. Once again, he was stopped by this young nun who was standing in the hallway 
begging him to please go back and try just one more time. So insistent, so insistent was she that this priest had to go back and visited this man one more time. But again, the gentleman refused. So the priest told him, well, let me at least say a short prayer, a divine mercy chaplain, and, and I'll go on my way. So he's, this, he started to pray. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. While he was praying the chaplet, the man told the priest, you're just wasting your time. There can be no mercy for me. Feeling puzzled, the priest asked, what do you mean by saying that there could be no mercy for you? So he began telling him the story. You see, 25 years ago, I worked at a railroad station. My job was to lower the rail, rail crossing arm when the train would approach the tracks so we, I can stop cars from going on the train tracks. But that one night, I started to drink and I got carried away. I was so drunk, I didn't lower the crossing arm. As the train came, mom, dad, and three children who were in the car instantly died from the crash that I was supposed to prevent from happening. It was all my fault. I failed, and there could be no redemption for me. The priest then took a deep breath, kept looking down and, and looking at his rosary beads, and after a moment of silence, he said, well, 25 years ago, my mom and dad and my three siblings went on this trip that I couldn't join. While they were going through a small village, for some reason, the crossing arm wasn't lowered. As my dad was driving through the, the, the train tracks, a train came. My entire family died that day. Moved by God's grace and his love, the priest told this man, God forgives you, and I forgive you too. The man repented and was reconciled with the priest, who was placed there by our good Lord, loving God, to win him over at his last moment of his life. The man went to confession that day and received Holy Communion and died peacefully two days after. When the priest came out of the hospital room looking for this nun, she had already disappeared. When he asked the hospital staff where this nun went, the staff was telling him, well, we don't have any nuns working in the hospital here. Some years later, some years have gone by, and this, whoever this nun was, her identity remained a mystery. But it so happened one day that he was in a town called Wagavniki to celebrate Mass for sisters at a convent where Sister Faustina used to live. And he spotted this painting of Sister Faustina, and he told his sister, that sister, I met her in the hospital a few years ago. Sisters told him, that's impossible, Father, because she died back in 1938. He replied, no, that's the sister whom I saw. She told me to go see this patient. And when I was about to leave the room and, and go home, and she told me to go back one more time. You see, God believes in second chances. Jesus forgave Peter of denying him three times. The repentant thief of his crimes, the woman caught in adultery of her infidelity, the tax collectors of their injustices, Saul of ruthlessly persecuting Christians, and Thomas of even doubting his presence, his existence. God meets us where we are, where we struggle the most, to help us transition from unbelief to belief, from despair to hope, and from doubt to certainty of faith. Ninety years ago, Jesus revealed to Sister Faustina that the gift of his infinite divine mercy gives assurance, reassurance, and hope for our humanity. Although divine mercy became a popular devotion only in recent years, Christians of all ages experienced this God's mercy, and they were transformed by it. We all know God is merciful and loving, and our biggest temptation is to think of God's mercy as parachutes in airplanes. We all know it's there, 
but we hope that we never have to use it. Rather than surrendering to God's will, we want to be in charge of our lives. We want to correct our own faults and get things right so that we won't need to have to plead for God's mercy. We prefer to be righteous than to be a contrite sinner. While we get the illusion that we are in charge, we're not. We all need a savior. And we do have a savior whose divine mercy wipes away all of our sins and invites us back to his loving embrace. Remember, God's mercy is a gift. It isn't something we earn. God gives it to those who do not deserve it and who are in most need of it. Let us join now as, as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, who is only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Easter season, we offer our community prayer in thanksgiving for the new life that is ours in the risen Christ. May we be strengthened by his healing presence among us so that we might live in peace and glorify him by our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we have offered our petitions to you. We ask you to grant us everything we ask you, ask you of, of, of our in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this, on, on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, 
for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.